Before I begin this review, allow me to give you a brief overview of what's contained in this video. While this started as being a review of Asden's Pro XR wireless microphone system, well, things didn't go as planned. Simply stated, it did not perform as expected. So in order to be fair, I thought it best to compare it side by side with the Rode Wireless Go, a similar priced wireless microphone that I could use as a benchmark. You'll also see in this video that I'm experimenting with virtual sets, so don't be surprised at the new look. For example, I'm really not in the studio at the moment. I'm simply standing in front of a green screen. With that said, while this video is somewhat long, it's detailed, and I hope that in some way it may assist you in future buying decisions. Towards the end of the video, I'll tell you my procedure of what I do when a product, in my opinion, does not perform as promoted. I'll add that no consideration whatsoever was provided for this review, and the products featured in this video were purchased by me. Let's start the video. Today, I'm going to tell you about this. This is Aston's ProXR 2.4 GHz wireless microphone, and I'm going to compare it to this. This is the Rode Wireless Go. This is one of the hottest selling 2.4 GHz wireless microphones on the planet today. Now the question is, the Aston is twice as big as the Rode, but is it twice as good? Well, I've put it to the test, so stay tuned because that starts right now on The Gadget Guru. You may have already noticed that I'm working in a brand new studio. I mean, check out this set. Isn't this gorgeous? And look at this. That's Disney World behind me. Well, truth be told, no, I'm not. I'm using a virtual studio. Take a look at this. See the green screen behind me and the, the green board in front of me? Well, I'm doing the same thing that you're seeing in a lot of television newsrooms around the country, and that's working in a virtual set. If you're interested in this, I'm working on a segment on this that I hope to have up in the near future to show you how you can do this for a pretty affordable budget. So don't forget to subscribe. So let's go on and get started with the review of the Asden Pro XR 2.4 GHz wireless microphone system. Let me get this out of the way up front. The Pro XR sells for $250. It's currently available. In the box is included just about every accessory you'd ever need. It even includes the lightning to microphone adapter, which is something you don't see in wireless microphones today. Now, as a comparison, the Rode Wireless Go that I'm using as a benchmark in this review sells for $200, and its matching Rode Lavalier Go microphone is sold separately for $80. Instead of me attempting to explain all the bells, whistles, features, and the new redundant technology that's being used on the Pro XR, well, allow me to roll in a one-minute promotional video that's shown on Asden's website. Pro XR 2.4 GHz wireless microphone system from Asden was designed for video content creators like you who want better audio without any frustration. No more worrying about keeping the transmitter in front of you. No more worrying about how many other 2.4 GHz devices are in the area. The Pro XR just works. Three features set the Pro XR apart from other digital wireless mics when it comes to reliability. Asden's proprietary signal redundancy technology sends two signals to the receiver instead of just one to significantly reduce the likelihood of dropouts. An external antenna design further improves performance. Using the included high gain transmitter antenna can deliver rock solid connectivity even when placed behind the back. And the transmitter's adjustable output power lets you boost signal strength up to 100 milliwatts to overcome crowded Wi-Fi environments and improve performance at long distances. Extremely robust, extremely reliable. That's the Pro XR 2.4 GHz wireless microphone system. Looks pretty good, huh? Well, I spent a couple of weeks with this system and I put it through a variety of conditions. Let's go in and start with my indoor test. As I said at the top of the video, I'm using the Rode Wireless Go as a benchmark in comparing the distance and sound quality to, well, the Aston Pro XR. So here we go. We're in a room, tall ceilings. We have echoes in here from this point where we are now to that archway. Line of sight is around 45 feet. I'm going to take a walk this way. Now, when I turn this way, since the road is mounted to my front, you know, we're not in line of sight. Now, now we're in line of sight. Now we're not. Over here is a GoPro Max. Let's go in and wave to it. That's my favorite 360-degree camera. 
So now we're coming around here. Now listen for dropouts, cutouts, whatever you want to call it, signal hopping, frequency hopping. Walking around the house talking to inanimate objects and she just knows her daddy's a little bit crazy. So now I'm coming back around here. Now we're now in line of sight. If I could guess, remember I haven't heard this yet, I'm going to guess that it sounds pretty good. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come up, I'm going to power down, I'm going to swap mics, and now we're going to do the same thing with the Aston Pro XR starting at the default 20 milliwatt power setting and then boost it up to 100 milliwatts. You just heard the Rode Wireless go, and now you know in this room, tall ceilings, it's a long room. You know, there's a, this room has a little bit of an echo to it. So you heard the sound quality. You got to see how it performed in the distances. Remember, this unit is larger here, the Aston. I'm going to clip it on the back of the belt. I'm going to do the same exercise. So but when I walk away, look, there's Lisey the dog laying down there. As I walk away, it should be somewhat in line of sight. As I approach this archway up here, that's approximately 45 feet and around 50 feet as I make the turn here. We're on the 20 milliwatt mode, which is the low power mode. In a moment, we'll go back and we'll kick it up to the mode, which is 100 milliwatts. Now, my, my body is in between the transmitter and receiver. We're now back in the same room. You know, I won't know how this sounds until I get it back on the computer. We'll compare notes and, you know, I'll look forward to your comments and to see what you think. I know I've tried this five or six times before, if not more, so I already know. Now, here's what I'm going to do. You can tell by, by, I hope we can see this in the camera, you an ultra-wide angle lens. The green means you're on 20 milliwatt. You press and hold. The orange, you're at 50. And now we're in a high powered mode. And remember this one, you know, if you look at the, what other reviewers are saying and, you know, uh, the information is online, this thing should knock it out of the park. So now I have it on the rear, so we're in line of sight. Lucy, how are you? We're coming around. I'm going to come up here to the 45 foot mark. Again, transmitter and receiver are facing each other. I'm now making a 90 degree turn. I'm in the back bedroom. You know, all the audio is coming off the first camera that you saw. I'm going to turn around now. They are no longer line of sight because my body is between the transmitter and receiver. I'm sorry I'm talking the whole time, but I'm trying to let you hear how this handles the signal. You know, is it dropping out? Is it staticky? How does it compare? Or how do you think it should compare for a $250, you know, transmitter receiver microphone? Okay. Let's go back to the office and we'll check out the sound. I have to tell you, nobody is more surprised at the results of that demonstration than me. I mean, I did that multiple times. I remember the first time I did it and I took the files and I connected the computer and put them in Final Cut Pro. And I heard this, I said, you know, something's got to be wrong. That the static is starting almost immediately and I repeated it multiple times. Now, what did we learn? The road stayed connected much better. When the road would lose a signal, it was like a chopping block. It would chop off. That means it was trying to channel hop. It couldn't find a channel, and boom, the signal went dead. Where the Asden, in a fairly close range for a 2.4 gigahertz microphone, seemed to get statically very quickly. I mean, this is just kind of unusual for any 2.4 gigahertz microphone system that I've used to date. Now, bottom line for this, Pretty much the same price range on both the mics. I give Rode the huge edge. Now, before we move outdoors, here's a clip of another promoted video that I found on Aston's website. The ProXR also has ridiculous range. At its highest 100 megawatt setting, you can get a max recording distance of 500 feet, and I tested that for you. So we're in a really big open field right now, and one thing that I want to do is test out and see how far I can walk away from the ProXR's receiver when I have the transmitter in my pocket. So this is 10 feet away right here, 20 feet easily. Let's boost up the signal. 50 feet is right about here. Let's keep moving beyond 100 feet. Hello at 150 feet, 200 feet. Here we are again, right in front of the camera. Based on that review, and it does say paid promotion on there, but I assume that, that this guy did a legitimate test. But it appears that the Pro XR is more equipped to give us 
more distances with a better signal outdoors and indoors. So here's what I did. Same thing. Use the road as a benchmark, then I switch to the Aston. So does the Pro XR perform better outdoors than indoors? Will you be the judge? I'm standing next to this guy for a reason. That's because I feel those long distance tests that you see so often in 2.4 gigahertz wireless microphone reviews, well, they're just a little bit dopey. Maybe I'm being a little bit grumpy. Who knows? You be the judge. To me, a wireless microphone is best used in situations where wires are not an alternative or possibly they're just inconvenient. As I've often said, if a 2.4 gigahertz wireless transmitter can't be separated from the receiver by 40 to 50 feet or so while delivering a clear and reliable signal in both line of sight and when somewhat blocked, then it's pretty good in my book. With that said, I'm in an open field, approximately 250 feet end to end. To prevent possible interference between the two units, the receivers have been separated by around 12 feet. Allow me to add that because the form factor of the Pro XR is designed to be worn in a similar manner to a studio body pack, I've placed both the units on my belt so that as I'm walking away, they're in line of sight. Let's get started. This is the Aston Pro XR at 45 feet. This is the Rode Wireless Go, 45 feet, line of sight. I'm now going to turn around. Let's see if you can hear me in non-line of sight. Aston Pro XR, I'm at 45 feet, approximately. I'm not line of sight. This is the Rode Wireless Go, 45 feet, line of sight. We're at 90 feet. This is the Aston Pro XR, line of sight. This is the Rode Wireless Go, line of sight. I'm now going to turn around and let's see if we can hear the signals when they're not in line of sight. This is the Aston Pro XR, my body is blocking the signal, we're not in line of sight, we're at 90 feet. Okay, we're at approximately 250 feet away. This is the Aston Pro XR, Line of sight, 250 feet. This is the Rode Wireless Go, approximately 250 feet, line of sight. Now I'm going to turn around. Let's see if you can hear either one. This is the Aston Pro on line of sight. As you just saw, both microphones held the line of sight signal all the way up to 250 feet. And that's impressive. However, when not in line of sight, the road started dropping the signal while the Aston developed static at only 45 feet. At 90 feet, non line of sight, while the road fully cut out, the Aston did maintain a connection, but the signal was full of static, making it what I would consider to be unusable. Considering that Aston states, and I quote, no more worrying about keeping the transmitter in front of you. I was truly surprised at this result. I have to say that I was impressed at the sound quality coming from both units at all ranges, even as far away as 250 feet when the transmitter and receiver were in line of sight. This test was performed multiple times and the results were similar. Now let's take a closer look at both the Rode Wireless Go and the Aston Pro XR. Sized at less than two inches square, the Rode Wireless Go is what I would consider to be an amazing feat of technology. A three second press powers the unit and the battery and connection status of both the transmitter and receiver can be seen on the small but usable screen. Another button designates a low, medium and high volume control and it's charged using a USB-C connection. A microphone is built into the transmitter, allowing it to be clipped to a shirt, either this way or this way, for a quick and easy setup. While it can accept a lavalier input, it's sold separately. A clip on the rear of the unit doubles as a mount that works on most cameras. The Aston, on the other hand, is almost twice the size, and unlike the road model, both the transmitter and receiver utilize an outboard antenna. Its minuscule screen shows the connection and power setting status, but it is difficult to read in even moderate outdoor lighting settings. The receiver incorporates a headphone jack and it utilizes 
what many would consider to be an antiquated mini USB connection. To Asden's credit, they did include a USB pigtail that allows both units to be charged from a single USB port. It does include another feature that I thought, well, it's just kind of unique. It's an auxiliary import that allows for the mixing of a sound source with a microphone. Now, here's a big gripe of mine. The buttons on here are embossed and not printed, and it just makes it difficult to read. Now let's go back to the studio. I'll give you a summary and I'll give you some insight on what I do when a product does not live up to, well, my expectations. As you already know, I purchase the products I review. If they perform as expected, well, I continue with my review. There's no reason to contact the manufacturer. However, and even in this case, when a product does not perform the way that I think it should, it's my practice to contact the manufacturer to let them know what I'm doing because many times, and even in this case, there was a bit of user error up front, which I corrected. I, you know, I want to know, do I have a defective unit and give them the opportunity to do a swap? I was told by Aston, there's nothing wrong with my unit. It's important for me to say, that I'm a big fan of Asden products. In fact, I own a bunch of them. One of my favorites, the one that I used for a few years, was a UHF two-channel microphone. It was affordable, it delivered good sound, and they were one of the first to come out with something like that. Big fan of that. I have some of their on-camera kind of shotgun boom microphones, whatever you want to call them, and I'm using an Asden microphone. You've been listening to that throughout this video. But I'm truly miffed by my experience with the Pro XR. Okay, let's get to the bottom line. Simply stated, I cannot in good faith recommend this product. However, if you are seeking a 2.4 gigahertz wireless microphone system, along with the Rode Wireless Go, I can recommend the Serigmonic Blink, and that one's available with both a single and dual transmitter, and I can highly recommend Pico Gear's dual channel Pico mic system is not only does it deliver good sound, the microphones are just absolutely tiny and easily concealed. So that's it for now. Now remember, the easiest way to keep posted of my news stories and videos is to simply like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash the gadget guru, and don't forget to subscribe right here on YouTube. And one last thing, if you like this video, you're gonna like this one. And if you like that one, you're surely going to like one of these. That's it for now. I'm the Gadget Guru, Andy Parr.